Hello and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 7th grade concept of numbers, specifically how different sets and subsets of numbers all fit together. This is a topic we started learning in 6th grade and we are expanding into 7th grade. So let's start with our smallest set of numbers. And these are actually going to be called by two different names. So sometimes we'll call them natural numbers and sometimes we'll call them counting numbers. And so that's the confusing thing here is we need to know that these numbers are actually, they just refer to the same type of numbers. So I'm going to be drawing my Venn diagram here. I'm going to start with my smallest numbers. So these are my numbers that when we teach kids how to count starting in pre-K and kindergarten, we start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So that's our smallest set of numbers. You notice they're all positive integers. They start with one. They could be used to describe like a place in line, like your first, your second, your third, your fourth. So that's our smallest set. Now outside of that, we have another set of numbers and it's not that exciting. It doesn't add much. Whole numbers start with zero. That's it. That's the only difference between whole numbers and natural or counting numbers, is they include that integer zero. I'm not sure why you have an entire new set of numbers that simply includes one additional number zero. I don't make the rules, I just explain them. But zero is not a part of natural and counting numbers because when we teach our kids to count in pre-K and kindergarten, we don't start counting with zero. We always start counting with one. So those are our first two sets of numbers, natural counting numbers, whole numbers. Now we get into the numbers that we start seeing a little bit more here in seventh grade. So next we're going to see integers. So integers obviously include natural counting numbers. They include whole numbers. So let me include those over here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They're still whole numbers, but integers also include negatives. So just think of just their opposites, right? If there's one, there's a negative one. If there's a two, there's a negative two. If there's a three, there's a negative three, so on and so forth. Now, obviously these keep going, right? We can put the dot, dot, dot. We're just running out of room and you get the pattern. So our first three sets of numbers, we're not dealing with any fractions. We're not dealing with any decimals. All of those, come in our fourth column. So we've got rational numbers. Now, rational numbers, the easiest way to remember those, and there's a lot of rational numbers, a lot. This includes so many more than our previous three subsets. Think of this word ratio, right? So a ratio is one way to represent a fraction. So a rational number is anything that can be represented as a ratio or a fraction. So obviously it's going to include all of our natural numbers. It's going to include zero. It's going to include all of our negative whole numbers, our integers. But it's also going to include fractions. So now we get to expand it to include one-tenth, right? We can even have some repeating fractions as long as we can represent it with a fraction. So one-third, even though if we wanted to put that into a decimal, it's 0.333 repeating. As long as we could represent it as a fraction, we're good to go. Decimals, right, 2.1, because if I wanted to, I really could just uh, represent this as a fraction, right, 2 and 1 tenths, or I can represent that as 21 tenths. If I can represent it as a fraction or a ratio, I can put it into a rational number. Now, for seventh grade, that's as much as we need to learn, but there's actually another set of numbers that lives outside of what we are even learning. Those are called irrational numbers. So think of these as a whole another set of numbers. So ir is a prefix that means not. So not rational cannot be viewed as a ratio. So for example, pi is a number that goes on forever. We cannot represent it with a fraction or a ratio, even though sometimes we'll, we'll give an approximation of about 22 over 7. That's just an approximation. Square root of 2 is a number that goes on forever. It never stops, and so it is also an irrational number. So there are some numbers you'll learn in eighth grade that exist outside of the rational numbers.